Hey physics students, Campbell here. In our first video on magnetism, we're going to talk about the magnetic fields created by current carrying wires. If you remember in class, we looked at what materials were magnetic and not, and we talked about how it's the spinning electrons that create the magnetic field. But only materials that have enough unpaired electrons can be magnetic. So iron can be a magnet. But just because it's iron, right, it doesn't mean that it's magnetic. The domains have to line up. And I showed you that demonstration that Hans Christian Ersted did where he discovered in class just by accident that when electrons are moving, right, moving electrons, spinning, woo, um, in wires, current, that he created a magnetic field because he saw that compass needle deflect. But it wasn't until Bio and Savar came along where they actually came up with an equation so that they could determine the magnitude of that magnetic field. And that's what we're going to talk about today, the magnitude and direction of magnetic fields of current carrying wires. So what Bion Spar found was that the magnitude of the magnetic field was proportional to the distance, how far are you away from the source of magnetism, and it was directly proportional to the current running through the wire. Kind of sounds similar to electric fields, right, where they're a function of distance um, and charge. Similar idea. But remember, fields, they're a property of space. The actual equation, and this is only for a long straight wire, is that the magnetic field, and remember the unit of magnetic field is Tesla, after my favorite all-time scientist, Nikolai Tesla. Um, it's symbol is B. And their equation for a long straight wire is the magnetic field is equal to this constant, which we'll talk about in a second, times the current in amps divided by 2 pi r, the distance that the point we're interested in the magnetic field is from that current carrying wire. Now, this constant is actually called the permeability of free space, and mu sub naught, and it's equal to 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 tesla times meters divided by amps. Now, interestingly enough, right, you see it's got 4 pi, and our equation here has 2 pi, which means that we can do some canceling out, and you get an equation that looks like 2 times 10 to the negative 7 times the current in the wire divided by the distance from the wire. Now, you're probably wondering, why does the current have this pi in it, and the equation has a pi in it? Well, remember, I said this is for a long straight wire only. Um, if we had other shapes or maybe a shorter wire, um, then the magnetic field would actually be an integral, and the equation would be different, and we would have to do some calculus, but that's why it has the pi in. But for your purposes, magnetic field for a long straight wire is 2 times 10 to the negative 7 times the current divided by the distance from it. Unit ends up being Tesla. Now, magnetic fields, just like electric fields, are vectors. And we need directions. Remember, electric field, the direction was given by the way a positive charge would move in the field. But what do we do for magnetic fields? Because remember, magnetic fields are continuous loops. Well, we're going to use what's called the right-hand rule. Now, the right-hand rule requires that you know which hand is your right hand. And so I have some kids actually on tests that put an R on their right hand, or actually I had a kid once that put a glove on their left hand. And so let's learn the right-hand rule. Got your right hand out? Let's go. Okay, so the way this rule works is, and sometimes it's easier if you use a wire or your pencil or something, and you're going to grasp the wire with your right hand. You're going to point your thumb in the direction of the current, and your fingers wrap in the direction of the magnetic field. Magnetic field actually makes circles around wires. So it's a circular magnetic field, and your fingers, the way your fingertips are pointing, are the direction of the magnetic field. Your thumb points in the direction of the current. So that means that if the current was running in the opposite direction of this wire, then our magnetic field would wrap in the opposite direction. Now, one thing you should know about the magnetic field at any point in space is it's actually tangent to that curve. So sometimes I call this rule the claw rule. So if I wanted to know, if I had a wire, current is traveling up, and I want to know the direction of the magnetic field 
directly in front of the wire, so right here, it would point directly to the right because the magnetic field is tangent to that curve. Or if I wanted to know the direction of the magnetic field um, here to the right of this wire, it would be into the page. All right, it would be like that. So I actually put my hand like a claw if I want to know the direction of the magnetic field at any certain point because it's tangent to the curve. So I try to make this right angle with my fingers and my hand. So if we have a loop, right, sometimes you'll have loops of wire. And we're going to do the same exact thing with a loop. Let me make this loop a little smaller. All right, here's a loop. Again, your thumb is going to point in the direction of the current flow through the loop, and your fingers will wrap in the direction of the magnetic field. So there's the magnetic field around this loop. Current is flowing in that direction. And there are my magnetic field lines. So magnetic field lines form loops. Now remember, when we talked about magnetic fields, we said that they form continuous loops. So it's not like they start and stop like electric field lines, but they form continuous loops that point from north through south. Now, because we're going to be dealing in three dimensions, not just left, right, up, and down, we're going to be dealing with into and out of the page, we're going to have to come up with another way to symbolize directions. So one way we do that is when something is into the page or out of the page, we're going to use crosses and dots. So if something is into the page, then you'll see an X. So think of it like an arrow. Like if someone shot an arrow away from you or you shot the arrow, you would see the tail feathers going away from you. So that would be like into the page. So X's mean into the page. Dots are like if the arrow was coming at you. Ah! So you would see the dot of the arrow, the tip of the arrow, right? So that's out of the page. So out of the page dots, into the page X's. Let's take a look at an example. So power lines, right? They carry current and they produce magnetic fields. So if we have a power line carrying 95 amps of current and the poles are 8.5 meters off the ground, what is the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field produced by this wire? Well, I guess for direction, you're going to have to know which way the current's going. So how about we say that this is our picture. Our current is flowing to the right. And I want to know the direction of the magnetic field at the ground and its magnitude. See if you can figure this out. Pause the video, do some math, and use your right hand. Well, if we use B.O. Savar's law, we're going to multiply our permeability constant by 95 and divide by 2 pi times the distance 8.5. If you did that correct, you should get 2.2 times 10 to the negative 6 Tesla. And if you did your direction right, you should get into the page. So there's our current moving to the right. All right, put your hands like a claw. And down below the wire, our fingers are pointing into the page. So our symbol for that would be an X. Into the page is an X. Now, if I wanted to know about above the wire, because maybe I'm worried about the birds, right, I'd rotate my hand and my fingers would be pointing out of the page. Sorry, it's reversed in this picture backwards, but you use your right hand. <laughs> All right, what if there's more than one wire carrying current? Like in your house, right? There are wires all over your house carrying current. Well, they each produce their own magnetic field, and because fields are vectors, right, magnitude and direction, we're going to have to do a vector sum of those two fields. So let's take a look at an example just for direction purposes. I have two long straight wires carrying current in opposite directions. So here, this first dot here, is that into the page or out of the page? Hmm, that would be out of the page, right? The arrowhead's coming at you. And my other one, right, that's the X, that's into the page, away from you. So how do I figure out the direction of the magnetic field here at point X? Well, the first thing you should do is, and there's my choices, is draw lines that connect the wire to the point in space you're interested in. Because perpendicular, right, tangent to the curve, right, these are going to make loops Here's the one um, on 
the left hand side coming out of the page at you is going to loop around the wire this way and the one into the page is going to loop around the wire that way so what you want to do is make your finger into a, make your hand into a claw put your thumb in the direction of the current so out of the page over here and your claw should make a right angle to that line that you drew and it should be pointing um, oops there's that one <laughs> that direction and there is the one from this one the out of the page one and if these are both equal in magnitude and the same distance right the vector sum of that the y or sorry the x components should cancel and the y components should add so your vector sum is up Yikes, the right hand rule is difficult. But the more we practice, the better we're going to get. And so we're going to do a bunch of practice in class. All right, what do I do from a magnitude standpoint? All right, we have Biosavar's law to calculate the magnitude of each, but how do I add them together? So well, let's take a look at this example. I have two parallel wires that are separated by a total distance of six centimeters. Wire one has a current of four amps, and wire two carries a current of six amps. They're both going in the same direction. So I want to know what is the resultant magnetic field midway between the wires. Well, first thing I want you to do is calculate the magnitudes. So pause the video, calculate the magnitudes of the magnetic field halfway. So that's an R value of 3 centimeters. So put that in meters. Do some math. And then let's figure out, do we add these? Do we subtract these? What? All right, so hopefully you've done some math, and now we got to figure out the direction of the magnetic field above and below these wires. Well, they're both pointing to the right, which, and your screen looks to the left. <laughs> Dang camera. Um, so hold your hand so your thumb is pointing to the right, and make a claw. Put your knuckles at the point of interest. So if we look at current one, which is four amps, we're looking above the wire, so your knuckles should be above your thumb. If you do that and you've made your hand a claw, you'll see that that's pointing out of the page. Your knuckles or your fingers should be pointing at you. And then rotate your knuckles so that they're below your thumb, right? Because in the second wire, you're looking below it. So you want to rotate those knuckles so your knuckles are at the point of interest, which is below your thumb. And your fingers are pointing into the page. So we've got one out and we've got one in, which means that they're pointing in opposite directions. So once we've calculated our magnitudes, we're going to have to subtract them. The resultant vector is going to be the sum of both. So one's in, we're going to call it positive. The other's out, we're going to call it negative. All right, so subtract the numbers that you got. There, for current one, you should have gotten 26.7 micro tesla, that's times 10 to the negative 6. And for current two, right, which is a higher current, 40 micro tesla, so 40 times 10 to the negative 6. And you're going to subtract these two numbers, and you get a negative 13.3 micro tesla, so times 10 to the 6. And I called micro into the, did I call that, did I call negative into the page? I don't remember now. But make sure you keep track of whatever you call positive and whatever you call negative. So negative z direction, we'll call that into the page. So that would be 13.3 micro tesla into the page. So the last thing I want to talk about in this video is solenoids. Solenoids have some amazing applications. And what a solenoid is, it's just a coil of wire wrapped like this. And it produces what's great about them and why they have such practical purposes is it creates a great strong uniform magnetic field in the middle of the coil. In fact, the magnetic field on the outside is actually very, very weak. It's just inside that it's strong. It's almost kind of like parallel plates where we had that strong electric field in the middle of the plates. Solenoids produce a strong magnetic field inside. And in fact, we can use our right hand rule to determine the direction. If we take a look at this picture here, you see current running down um, as it comes into the solenoid. So put your thumb down and put your knuckles through the middle and you can see that your knuckles if you make the claw make the claw your knuckles are pointing to the right but inside very strong magnetic field one great application of this is an mri machine if you've ever been in an mri machine you've been in a solenoid 
Now, the equation is different in that the diameter of the solenoid actually doesn't make a difference. What makes a difference is how many turns you have or how many loops there are. That's what the N stands for. And how long it is. The longer the solenoid, actually the weaker the magnetic field is. So the magnetic field of a solenoid is that constant, 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th, times the current running through the solenoid, times how many loops there are of that wire, divided by how long it is. All right. I know, that was a long one. Fill out your Google form, and I'll see you in class.